So you could use a Michelin Cup 2 or Cup 2R yeah. and you would be within LMP2 pace. Yes, but that's without the track pack. That's, that's without the track, that's as, a, that's as it is. As this car stands here now, it's LMP2 levels of performance. I, I don't have the words to contextualise how serious that is. It's hard to convey that kind of performance with something that wears number plates. Yeah. So hello, as the title of this video would confirm and as the view over my shoulder would suggest, today is an incredibly special day. So this is my final Michelin mission of the year and we are ending it with an incredible story. Not only are we getting an exclusive look and insight as to how far the Valkyrie development program has progressed, uh, also thanks to the collaboration of Aston Martin and Red Bull Advanced Technologies, we're bringing you one of the very first drives of the Valkyrie. It will be internal footage, you've seen a few teaser shots in the opening montage of this. So if you stick around long enough, you'll be able to see, and most importantly hear, what this car, which as far as I'm concerned is the holy grail of cars, sounds like. Um, naturally aspirated 6.5 litre V12. I mean, as we all know, naturally aspirated V12s in any format right now is somewhat of a dying breed. So this thing uh, is absolutely incredible and uh, I can't help but feel that it, it is somewhat of a swan song of the V12. Anyway, today we're talking technical partners, everything that's gone into the development of this car and uh, why ultimately all of that stuff gets transmitted to the road through one thing, which is the tyres. Okay, so just before we talk to uh, Fraser Dunn from Aston Martin. I'm just going to run you around some of the technical partners involved in the project, uh, which all filters through these black circles here. The Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, which the car is currently running because we are in winter. Uh, there's going to be there is some amazing information on these tyres, which, which uh, Fraser from uh, Aston Martin will share with us shortly. Uh, but first of all, uh, here we are, Red Bull Advanced Technologies. Uh, these guys are translating all of the learning from Formula One via the greatest F1 designer and aerodynamicist ever, Adrian Newey. Uh, they've worked closely in collaboration with Aston Martin to make this happen, but they've also brought on board some incredible technical partners. Uh, we've got Multimatic who are making the carbon tub, uh, Bosch are doing all of the ESP and stability and traction control programs. Uh, there's secret partners, which I'm not allowed to share, which provide the heat coating on the exhaust and wing so that it doesn't melt, uh, which we shall share with you some very interesting stats on the temperatures. That's a little thermo gauge there. The temperatures that area reaches have required some very bespoke developments for the car. This is such a significant moment because the project of Valkyrie itself, even on paper, critics said it simply was not possible to create this car and yet here it is in albeit prototype form but fully functioning customer cars will begin delivery next year if you've been following the journey or my journey of the story of Valkyrie since day one I am honored to be part of the journey of specking and building a real car so a close friend of mine has um, effectively given me free reign on his Valkyrie and I'm pleased to say that we have chassis number 49 car number 49 has been confirmed as our Valkyrie which will be landing next year so not only will we share with you the build process of that specific car. Uh, some of you guys may have seen the journey of that spec process, but we'll actually be receiving, taking delivery, and we are going to actually drive it, drive the actual car which we have configured. Anyway, back to the star of the moment. I'm stood here with Fraser Dunn, a chief engineer for Aston Special Projects. 
but you're also working on Valkyrie yes. as well. Right. So the last time I saw this car, and it, it, it turns out is this exact car yep. was on the Geneva the stand same car at Geneva. back in March. So as, as you said, it's the exact same car that we had at Geneva. So um, for the last couple of months, we've gone through a huge amount of work of commissioning all the complex systems in the car um, and get them up and running. So the, the, the key thing that is very important to understand on this car is that absolutely every single component on the car has been designed specifically for this car so a normal kind of car program you would you would um, obtain certain components from um, existing vehicles or it'd be an evolution of, an, of, a, of a prior vehicle this is literally every single component is brand new for the car the last other interaction i had was in the simulator yep. that was an eye-opener because what this car was benchmarked against at that time uh, was what we would consider a hypercar now yep. but it felt like this is completely rewritten well, it's another, it's so another it's level. a completely different ball yes yeah. so um, the, the main thing uh -huh. that the kind of kind of pertains the vehicle's performance is the rear venturis so the the, the rear tunnels here yeah that that is essentially as, as you can see all the way through Look at that you can literally see through the car i mean and really and that is where the performance like a formula car it looks like a formula chassis it's with an exoskeleton on it, it it's arguably beyond a formula one car because they can't get to this size of tunnel on a formula one true, car true yeah wow so this this is one, one of the interesting things is is that there's a lot of elements in this which are um adrian's kind of like dream ingredients if the FIA didn't have sure. uh, rules that they could deploy on a car. So wow. um, that is the key thing that's kind of generating a lot of the downforce. So if you look on a normal Formula One car, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you've got a big wing on the back of the car. Yes. That's to get more downforce. But the reality on this car is that we don't need a huge amount of wing on the back because, because that's, the amount of that's ground effect. Is it? Yes, exactly. It's all exactly. about the ground effect. Wow. So um, the other nice thing is obviously then you then have the active aerodynamics on the car. So um, these are all, the, 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 this second element here, this is hydraulically controlled okay. um, and at higher speeds that starts kind of as you have on a Formula 1 car, DRS, so it's drag reduction. Uh -huh. um, but that also means that you, you start bleeding off uh, a bit of the downforce. Sure. And the reason we do that is because we have literally squeezed every ounce of performance out of what is possible from the loads that we put into the car. So you get to a bit of a balancing point uh -huh. of, of saying, well, how, how hard do you want to push it? And, sure. and, and what actually gives you a benefit? Uh, what is the temperature that the exhaust generates around the Well, the, the actual... The actual um, tailpipe gas temperature will be uh, up at about 950 degrees <laughs> right, but okay. we're, we're kind of seeing kind of underside temperatures on uh -huh. here of like 250 300 degrees wow. um, and then we're getting you can see here this is as this is a development vehicle at the yes. moment you can see that we've got this um, kind of thermal mat on here which is basically just to protect this bit whilst we kind of sure yeah. develop how we're going to handle the, the these high uh, temperatures but just on where the, the um, Oh, yeah, wow. That's getting up to just over 210 degrees on the, that's where your number plate sits. So, so you, I heard you guys have had to develop or get a special agreement that you're able to run a different type of plate. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're obviously completely legal, but a normal, sure. a normal number plate that you stick on the car in the UK is <laughs> would plastic. Would melt. And that would, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would end up looking like yeah, uh, cheese yeah. on the floor. So, um, yeah, we, we, we go to, to a metallic number plate. How far have you pushed the tyre tech? So, one of the interesting things about this car is that, as, as we were saying, the, the, the whole kind of essence of its performance is driven by downforce. Uh -huh. So, on a normal tyre um, and how you select tyres and their tyre loading is driven, driven by vehicle weight. Uh -huh. But in this car, we've got a slightly different scenario where we're actually kind of yielding uh, aerodynamic performance that takes you to the limit of the tyre. So, part of the strategy on the car is, again, as I was saying with this DRS kind of capability, is that we actually run up to a point and then we then start coming down on, on the low carrying capability of the tyre. So, the car is developed with the Cup 2 tyre. Uh -huh. So, that is the kind of like the, the tyre that gives you the performance. Um, on uh, tests that we've done and um, performance um, comparisons that we've done on the Vulcan program, which mm -hmm. runs a Cup 2 tyre, yeah. the tyre is actually comparable to a slick. That's how That's impressive it is as, as a road legal tyre. Wow. Um, so <laughs> a Cup 2 is, is what the car's developed around, but then we've also, as you'll see on the car as we're running it at the moment, that's actually yeah. running a 4S. Yeah, I spotted that. Again, so, is, is an incredibly capable tyre. That is amazing. Um, I particularly this, like this, the, this the detail on the wall. 
gives us the benefit of the kind of the cold weather. So obviously, yes, we're in, we're in uh, kind of two, three degrees. Height of so, December. So we can use we can use these tires for for kind of cold weather and wet weather running. Um, just gives us that little bit of extra grip because mm -hmm. of the nature of the of the tire. And then actually on this program. Um, Pretty much driven by some legislations for, for various countries is that we have to offer a winter tyre. So the, really? the car will also be offered with a um, Pilot Alpine. So you can effectively have a, a snow bias tyre for a Valkyrie? A full blown winter tyre on a Valkyrie. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the coolest thing about that for me, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it, is yeah. obviously when we run this car in the wet, you get a big rooster's tail. I can imagine that. So in the snow, you'll get a oh, proper blizzard rooster's tail. tail. Yeah, a blizzard tail. A blizzard tail, tail. wow. Yeah, that's so. going to be exceptionally cool. And I think that's one of the incredible things about this car is the two extremes that it has to be able to, to operate in. But you could end up on a wet British B road yep. on your Cup 2 and then drive it to Silverstone and do a pretty successful track day and then drive home again. Yes, definitely. With the level of performance and downforce that this has. If it snowed, you could stick the winters on. You could yeah, swap them out. <laughs> what a berserk machine. But like on a, on a Formula One car, you, I mean, we're not running a full cake tin, as they call them on a Formula One car, right. but what we have is um, these ducts here, which actually is, is force cooling direct to the caliper. And on the other side of the disc, there's a, a similar duct that fires air directly into the center of the, of the disc. So this car, as, as we see it now, is, is running um, without the aero disc. So when you run the aero disc, it basically that improves the downforce on the car because you get a vortex off the front of this wing here. If you run the, if you run the wheel disc, you actually uh -huh. scavenge all the brake cooling air out on the inside of the wheel. So it comes in on the inside and comes out on the inside. Wow. If you run, if you run it as it is now, uh -huh. and it's, I think it comes down more down to personal preference, but if you have the disc on, it means that you actually get more downforce as well. So it's, it's kind of like a science project that just so happens to have wheels. This car. Those two words I have used a lot on this project. It's like, <laughs> oh great, it's another science it's, project. Yeah, it really but is. It's it, it is. Unreal. And, and, and there are so many firsts on this car, that, um, and I think maybe last as well because I yeah. just don't think anyone's going to go this far ever again. Will you be offering a Cup 2R? Yes, well, so okay. the, the car is offered with what we call the track pack. Uh -huh. So the track pack allows the car to be um, lowered even further, um, and okay. then that kind of yields even right. more uh, ground more effect, ground effect. And down, down force. Okay. Um, so that car, in, or that pack, will be tuned around the, the 2R tyre. Right. I heard a stat on, in the early journey of this car. In the right hands, it, it wouldn't do too bad in the qualifying session of an F1 race, in terms of being halfway up a pack. As a road car, yeah. it will be quicker than an LMP2 car. As you drive out of it in the showroom, just, you yeah, can turn up at Le Mans and you would be as quick as it. With, with, with a road tyre on and everything, it's LMP2. So you could use a Michelin Cup 2 or Cup 2R yeah. and you would be within LMP2 pace? Yes. But that's without the track pack. That's, that's as, without the track. That's as, a, that's as it is. As this car stands here now, it's LMP2 levels of performance. I, I don't have the words to contextualize how serious that is. It's hard to convey that kind of performance with something that wears number plates. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you just have to... I, I, I don't know, watch, I don't watch, have it, it's watch, not there. Watching car footage <laughs> yeah, exactly. of an yeah, LMP2 yeah, yeah. passing a GTE, it's... <laughs> Berserk. The main powertrain on this car is, is hugely kind of um, yes. Formula One driven, so you, you don't have the engine hung in, a, in an isolated condition like you'd have in a normal car. Uh -huh. it, it is a fully stressed powertrain. So like in a Formula One car, the engine is mounted to the tub, Fantastic. the gearbox holds all the suspension components and there is no kind of frame to the so car. So the gearbox is a structural component yeah, it's a, it's of a the car? Yeah, it's a stressed member powertrain. Wow. So all the, all the uh, wishbones hang off that. And then obviously one of, Amazing. one of the crazy things is, is obviously because you've got this high tunnel here. Yes. If you actually look through here, You'll be able to see the, the, the kind of the wishbone oh, wow, yeah. and the drive shaft actually live in the same That's ridiculous. Plane. So um, the this, packaging is amazing. Oh, it's, it's, it's completely bonkers. Wow. Um, and these these are all kind of like the the outputs. It's all all the nice bits that Adrian mm -hmm. has dreamt up over the years to deploy in Formula One cars is uh -huh. all being kind of mashed together and, and, and put into a road car. That's how Crikey. extreme this vehicle is. Phenomenal.
Okay, so that's it. Massive thank you to Michelin for getting us access to this incredibly exclusive project. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the onboard footage. It's blowing my mind. Uh, bearing in mind, this is currently in prototype stage. Cannot wait to see what a finished Valkyrie will be all about. The minute, effectively, the car looks fairly rough and ready because it's a dev car. The car which I saw on the Geneva show stand is actually this car. Uh, in its finished guise, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, so to combine that beauty and that performance in one package will be outstanding. Uh, the car which I specced a few months ago, which will be turning up in actual form, we will be following the build and development of that car. And then ultimately, of course, we'll be going for the first drive. So massive times ahead in 2020. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.